So my feed stays pretty positive. Yep. If you're going to be negative, Nellie, you are hidden. I may still be friends with you, but I'm not seeing your stuff. Right. So for all you people going, you never comment. It's because I don't see your stuff because you're being negative. So step it up. Yeah. But it's, you have a choice. I mean, my choice is always just not to consume the negative stuff or not to turn on the news. So we've got, I feel like a lot of people just make, they're making the choice to stay on and to see the negative. I had this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday and I had noticed because he's somebody that I, I follow and I was like, okay, I, you're not on Facebook anymore. He's like, I had to turn it off. I had to deactivate. Yeah. So, and he said, and I was like, oh, I said, so you're off for getting, he goes, no. He said, I do that every so often because you can deactivate your account. Yes. And then when you reactivate it, it comes back with all your friends or whatever. But I've never done that. But he says he yeah. does it every so often. He goes, I just get to the point where it's too much of a time suck. It's too negative, so I just deactivate it. And I was like, oh. I mean, I, I guess I've heard of people doing that, but it was this is somebody closer to me, so I was like, that was interesting. But that's what he said. He goes, I just got where I, I didn't need that distraction, and I didn't need the negativity. Yeah. But it was a conscious choice to make that, which I think is cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, I'm not going to be deactivating my accounts. So if you don't want to deactivate, I think you've got to stay positive. Yeah. Well, and that's, for me personally, I feel like that, to me, that would be saying that the negativity won. Right. I just choose to only pay attention to the good things because there right. are good things that For I sure. like on, on, For sure. on social media that I don't want to be taken away, right. right? Like I like staying connected with you and seeing what right? you're doing. Right, because I'm so and fun and positive. You are, well, and like <laughs> a lot of times that's how I find out like, oh, awesome, Kristen's got a webinar or something yeah. like that coming yeah. up because I'm on the feed like that right. or you know, family that are states away that, yep. you know. I think you can curate it because I, yeah. I agree. I don't think, I was surprised when he had said that he, you know, got off social and that, especially that he'd done it before. Yeah. Um, he can, uh, this particular friend can, can get into the negative more. He can get sucked in. Um, so I think that's, you've got to know your limits and know, know how you work. But I think yeah. for most people, there's, there's a satisfaction in staying in the negative for them mm -hmm. or they wouldn't do it mm -hmm. so i'm really curious you know kind of with people listening that tend to go to the negative because it's not me i don't i don't go there um what's draw there's a reward i mean people only follow a certain behavior because they're getting something out of it so i think if you are the type that gravitates to the negative you got to think what is this doing for me yeah. what am i getting out of it do i like drama do you like i am so non-drama i hate drama i will distance myself from drama all day long i wasn't like that younger yeah. I was like all in the drama, but now it's just like, I don't have time for it. So I feel like some people, maybe it's like they just, it's like the train wreck. They see the train wreck and they want to stop. Yeah. Or the car wreck. That, and I would also say, if you grew up in a negative environment, yeah, you just have to work harder not to let it. Because that's your you familiar. In. Yes. Yeah. And so you could gravitate toward that if that's just something that you're used to and you're comfortable with. Okay. You just have to work really hard not to allow it to suck you in. So if that is you and you do better by right. saying, I'm going to step away from social media, then back to your point, right. you have to know that about yourself. And actually, I think that that may be the case there because, you yeah. know, with a lot of people that could be, it's like, this is my familiar. I, I know I'm going to get sucked in. Mm -hmm. I have to do like, I just, you know, I let the algorithms do their work and I just stay away but that's content i mean mm -hmm. that's that we're talking about like curated content mm -hmm. there is content does not have feelings content does you know social media is is an inanimate object even yeah. though it sometimes seems like it's not <laughs> so we can we can nip that in the bud it's a hundred percent in our control but i also feel like in order to really focus on positivity there are going to be some people that we need to nip in the bud and I saw a quote the other day or a meme or something and it said uh it's okay to unfollow people in real life and I it's, thought yeah that that's cool yeah I would I, I'll unfollow all day long it's easy to unfollow people online right because right. you know the cool thing is they don't get notifications and I've had clients ask me that before you know clients that I've managed their social or help them with their strategy and I'm like you know they're like well I don't want to be connected to this person I'm like well unfriend them or you know unlink in with them and they're like or are they going to know? And I'm like, nope. So the cool thing is you can unfollow people online and they don't know. Yeah. Unless they happen to go to your profile. Yeah. But unfollowing them in real life takes a little bit of courage. Right. It does. Yeah. Have you ever had to unfollow anybody in real life? Yeah. Um, and that's easy to do with friends and acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Not so easy to do with family. family. Yep. And um, again, y y you have to. 
control the controllables. Control right? the controllables. You Who said that? That is a wise quote, Chris Ms. And Andre. Whitney. <laughs> um, you have to know that going in. So like, if you know we're coming up on the holiday season, yep. yeah. it's okay to plan your time around that. Yeah. Like, go see that family member, but don't hang out for five hours. Maybe only hang out for one. So there are, and I, I've, I say this a lot, there are small dose people yeah. in all of our lives. So you've got to recognize, all right, this is a small dose person. So a small dose person, you're either short, cutting your time short, like, hey, I really want to come see you, but oh my gosh, I've only got 45 minutes. I've yeah. only got an hour. Or you can kind of look at, if it's a small dose person, besides limiting time, you can also do it jointly. Meaning with like witnesses, <laughs> with witnesses, bring in the witnesses, witnesses present. So, so we have a uh, Katrina, Frank, Darla and Lynn watching with look us. Look at this. We got all kind of hello, fellas and ladies. Good morning. So I'd love y'all's comments and seeing what you've done to kind of keep positive and get rid of, especially the negative people, because negative people are, are those are the tough ones for me. But I, I feel like, you know, small dose. I know. I call them the energy zappers. Mm -hmm. We all know sure. who the energy zappers are. We all have them. And whether it's just someone who, I mean, it is, it's just, it could be a client, it could be a friend, it could be whatever where you're going, ugh. I mean, I did see one solution on the interwebs this week, and it said, over Thanksgiving, be sure and bring up politics because it will cut down your Christmas list of the gifts you have to buy. Like, okay. But nice. it's true. I mean, you, yeah. they're hot button. You know, you guys know, like my, um, ex-in-laws my uh my ex-husband's family or it's really fun you know usually you have terrible in-law stories my that's a, i hated when i got divorced that's what i missed like i had the coolest in-laws they were yeah awesome yeah um he was the youngest of four kids so two and two um well two and two three three boys and a girl but two, when i say two and two two of them were fiercely liberal two of them were fiercely republican so holidays were always very interesting. Yeah. But what I liked about it, it it wasn't, they weren't doing what people do on social and trying to talk anybody else out of their opinion. Yeah. They weren't saying you're an idiot. I mean, they may have said you're an idiot, but they did it in jest. <laughs> and it was, um, it was a back and forth discussion with a huge amount of respect for each other. Mm. And they weren't trying to change them. They weren't, to, they were just teasing. You know, and it, it never got ugly. The holidays were always good. I mean, there were tons. It's a big family. There's yeah. Now there's nieces and nephews and all that. But one of the things I thought was so, always saw, was so cool about them and that I miss is that there, there was no negativity. So regard, they could have the most polar opposite views or opinions, but no one ever went to the negative. So that kind of made me think it's a conscious choice. I mean, yeah, you can sit there is. and banter and have disagreements. I have friends, I said this during, you know, not to make it all political, I said this during the election. I have friends on both sides of the aisle, fiercely as far apart as they could be. And some of them are negative and some of them are not on both sides. And it was, it was disheartening to see the ones, I get being so passionate, but you can still be passionate and kind. Right. And you can still be passionate and positive. Yeah. So if we are, you know, if you're opinionated on something, then the focus becomes, all right, what do I want to say? What is my message? And how can I spin my message positively? And you don't have to break down other people to do that. And I think that's where things start to go negative is where people start to say, okay, I'm going to really crush another person. Yeah. So.